to our first alert forecast. Lonnie Quinn standing by with an update. Still chilly outside there, Lon. Yep, and it's chilly. It'll be even colder in the morning, but we're, we're going to start. We're start moving in the direction of the temperatures warming up. Right now, if you look outside, all right, there we have the Empire State Building with a 25 degree reading. It's mostly clear sky overhead. Winds. Non-existent right now. 25 feels like 25. High temperature was 31 degrees today. 40 is your average, so yeah, you're off the mark by a good 9 degrees. 21 was the morning low. You're 21 again tomorrow. A little bit more breeze in the morning, so 21 could feel as cold as about 5 degrees in the city. We're going to get you up to 36 degrees, so for the first time since the storm, we are going to go above the freezing mark, so there will be some melting out there. Problem's going to be, as you get to tomorrow night, we're dropping back below the freezing mark, so this will be the first time that the, real, that the temperatures have really helped to melt the snow, so then you can expect some refreezing tomorrow night as we get real cold again. But rain is likely on Thursday because temperatures after that, all right, we're bumping up above the freezing mark, then well above the freezing mark. I mean, by Thursday, some of you are in the 50s. The temperatures will drop again on Friday, so some of that rain that exits may exit as some wet snow north and west of the area. We'll look at all that, but then the real cold air sets up on Saturday. Below freezing for a high temperature, maybe say 29, 30 degrees on Saturday. Looking outside right now, you don't see too much of anything. So I'll get a couple of clouds offshore. I'll give you a bigger, broader picture. We'll make some sense of all the dynamics. Here we go. All right, we got a couple of systems out there that we're watching. One, way up here around North Dakota, actually even into Canada, and then this rain that you see around Houston. These two systems are pushing off to the east, and as they move to the east, we're going to watch them interact a little bit. So you put it into motion. There we go. There we go. There we go. A little bit of that interaction right here. Now, it's interesting because this low pressure system to the north is dragging a cold front with it. Cold fronts separate air masses, right? I mean, you have milder air on one side, so we see the rain, and on the back side of the cold front, you have the snow that's out there. What are we going to get? Well, I believe we're going to be running out, of, running out of moisture as this moves in. So it's kind of like a race against time. The moisture moves in. The temperatures will uh, slowly start to drop, but do they get down you know, to that 32-degree mark before we're done with the moisture? I don't think we're going to pick up too much frozen moisture. I think it's going to be rain. All right, here's your picture in the time frame there, 10.30 in the morning on Thursday. So we've got rain in the area. The front's still up to our north, and then it's going to take its sweet time moving through but there is still moisture out there, and as this is making its way through, say, Friday or around lunchtime, we get a little bit of a wintry mix, maybe some wet snowflakes north of the area, but now, literally, it just gets exhausted out of moisture. We don't see too much at all in terms of snowfall, maybe a little bit north and west. So, here's what we've got for you. 36 on Tuesday, 44 on Wednesday, that is your Groundhog Day, 48 on Thursday. If not, maybe finding 50 degrees. Rain is likely. Yeah, you're down to 39 Friday morning. Maybe some folks will turn to a little wintry mix. 43 ends up being the high Saturday, Sunday. It's a cold weekend, 29 Saturday, 30 for your day on Sunday. That's my seven-day forecast, guys. It's all yours. Okay, Lonnie, thanks.